Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at how to divide polynomials using synthetic division. And synthetic division is just a shorthand or a shortcut method for polynomial division. Keep in mind that it only works in the special case of dividing by a linear factor. And synthetic division is generally used, however, not for dividing out factors, but for finding the zeros or the roots of a polynomial. So let's just back up for one second and just a quick reminder of what do we mean by the zero or the root of a polynomial. So if you have the polynomial x squared minus x minus six, I can factor that and I'm gonna get x minus three, x plus two. So that means that the zeros, if I say x minus three equals zero, x equals three, x plus two equals zero, x equals negative two. So these are the, the zeros. We also call them the roots. We also call them the solutions, all right? And that means that if we were to draw this graph, we would be, have a zero at three, and we would have a zero at negative two, and our graph would then look something like this. Okay, so they're called x-intercepts, they're called zeros, they're called roots. So we have an example here and it says, determine if three is a root of the polynomial. And we have this big long polynomial and we're, what we're really asking is, is x minus three a factor? Well, you could use long division and you see I have an example here with long division where we take x minus three and we try to divide it into the polynomial and we see if we get a remainder of zero at the end. And we do, so we know three is a root, x minus three is a factor. Now we could also do the same thing without using long division and it's called synthetic division. And on the next page, I'm gonna show you the process, but for now on this page, I just want you to notice how significantly reduced the work is when you, we do synthetic division. And I think once you learn it and you start to practice it, you'll feel really comfortable and you, you really won't wanna use long division again. So that's really the point. It's a shortcut method. All right, so here's all the steps given this example. And so we have this polynomial and we wanna know is x plus four you know, a factor. So in other words, is negative four a root? And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna write down all the coefficients, all right? Now, notice it goes from x cubed to x squared, and then we skip x to the first, it's not there. So we have to leave a placeholder of a zero there. And then we put 29. So this is the x to the third term, the x squared term, x to the first term, and then the constant. And we're just putting the coefficients in front of each of those terms down. So far, so good. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever, so we this is our factor. We need to put the root that we're testing in the box. Well, if x plus four is the factor, the root or the zero is gonna be negative four. And that's gonna go right in this corner. So that's the next step. We're gonna bring down the coefficient of the dividend. Okay, so the first coefficient, we're just gonna bring it down and put it right in that position. And now here's the fun part. So we're gonna take that value and we're gonna multiply it by negative four. So two times negative four gives me negative eight. Then I'm gonna add these numbers together. Six plus negative eight gives me negative two. Then I'm gonna do negative two times negative four gives me eight. Add those two numbers together, I get eight. Then we do eight times negative four, that gives me negative 32. Add those two numbers together, that gives me negative three. So in this case, I get a remainder of negative three. That means that negative four is not a root, it's not a zero, and that means that x plus four is not a factor. All right, so my final answer is listed here. The remainder, which was minus three, over the divisor, which was x plus four. Okay, so don't worry if you know you right now you still have no idea what I'm talking about. We're gonna do we're gonna do a couple 
until you start feeling good about it. And then in no time, you're going to be an expert. But remember, you have this page to use as a reference. Okay, so let's do uh, number one here together. So first of all, it's saying to divide the polynomial by the factor x plus 1. That means I need to put negative 1 up in this top left corner. And remember, I said I'm going to bring all the coefficients down. So I've got 1x cubed, so I'll bring the 1. I've got 9x squared, bring down the 9. 16x, bring the 16. And I have 8. And I wasn't missing any terms. I have, I have the... Um, x cubed, I have x squared, x to the first, and then the constant. So I just need 1, 9, 16, and 8. I don't need a 0 placeholder. You're going to bring the 1 down, and you're going to multiply the 1 by negative 1, and that goes here. Then you add them together. 9 plus negative 1 is 8. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 16 plus negative 8 gives you 8. 8 times negative 1 gives you negative 8. And then 8 added with negative 8 gives me a 0. And we always like to put a smiley face when we get a 0 for a remainder because that just means that x plus 1 is indeed a factor and negative 1 is a root. So what are we left with? Well, we started out with x cubed. So we've reduced the polynomial by 1, all right? So now what we have is 1x squared plus 8x plus 8. So when we divided x plus 1 into x cubed plus 9x squared plus 16x plus 8, we were left with x squared plus 8x plus 8. The remainder was 0. All right, so let's try another one. My factor is x minus 2. I'm going to put positive 2 in the box, okay? Because if x minus 2 is a factor, 2 is the root that I'm testing. I'm going to bring down all the coefficients. I'm not missing any terms. I go from x cubed to x squared to x to the first to the constant. So I don't have to put a 0 as a placeholder in. I bring down the 10. 10 times 2 is 20. Add them together. 6 times 2 is 12. Add them together. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Add them together. We're so happy. We've got another remainder of zero. Okay? So that means we started with 10x cubed. So we're reducing our x term by 1. So our final answer is going to be 10x squared plus 6x minus 7. All right? Now, I will tell you that number three, you're, going, you're again going to have no remainder. Number four, you're going to have no remainder. Very happy, smiley face at the end. But five and six, you will end up with the remainder. So I'm going to continue to do the work. You can pause and come back when you're ready. I would suggest that and see how you do.
Actually, I just noticed that with number three, we you were working with P, so I just want to change these to P squared minus 8P. Remember, our divisor was m minus 10, and since this time we do have a remainder, we need to write minus 9 divided by m minus 10, our original divisor. That's going to go here. Remainder goes here. careful with number nine. There's no linear term. There's an x cubed. There's an x squared. But there's no x to the first, so I have to put a zero in for that as a placeholder. The same thing happens with number 10. We don't have a linear term, so we're going to need to leave a placeholder. I hope by this point you're starting to feel the love of synthetic division. I think it's kind of fun. hope you do too. Be careful with this one. We don't have the constant term, and we can't forget about a placeholder for the constant term. We had the cube, we had the squared, we had x to the first, and we still need a placeholder for the constant term. Okay, everybody, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.